Hi everybody, welcome to Cox Talks by Kat Scheffler. I'm actually re-uploading a live video because I forgot a couple other things when I uploaded it the first time. But here you go. Here's how to diagnose a problem. All right. Hi guys. Um, so I got two questions this week about diagnosing problems in the boat. Um, one was about trying to feel things out in the boat and the other it was specifically about problems at the catch and how do we fix the set. So I'm just going to go through some common problems and how you can fix them even though we can't necessarily see what's going on. So the first thing is set. Now set is so many, 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 many things that come into play. So it's not just going to be one thing. And usually you cannot see what's happening, whether you're in the bow seat, um, or sorry, bow loaded seat, or the um, stern of the boat. Um, it You still really can't tell what's happening um, visually. So you're going to look and feel for a couple things. Set refers to the balance of the boat. Normally we want everything level and then the oars come out level as well. Your boat might be offset through the entirety of the stroke. Maybe we're just constantly down like this. Or are we only coming down every couple strokes? And is it swapping, going back and forth? Or you feel pretty set, and then right at one part of the stroke, it drops down. Okay. So if you are pretty consistently down on one side, that's kind of the easiest to call because you're going to say we're down on port. If we're down on port, um, when it's down on that side, they are going to raise their hands so that their blades go down. And starboard, lower their hands so that their blades come up higher. And that should level out the boat. What I like to do in practice is have everybody sit at the finish squared and buried and see if you're set or not. Because if you're not set when everyone is sitting in the right place with their hands right where they're supposed to be and blades buried in the water completely, exactly where they need to be, then you have a problem with spacers and you need to fix that. Otherwise, you're never going to be in the right place. Uh, sometimes the problem isn't handle heights. So that is more of a temporary fix in some cases. Um, what else can we do? We can figure out what the actual problem is if it's not just handle height. Things that can affect set are not other than the hands are going to be what we do with the body. Okay, so uh, one thing that you can do if you don't know what the problem is, is you can remind people, A, level hands, handle heights. Also squeeze the core nice and tight. The core affects the set a lot. So we don't think about that. But if you squeeze that core, we're going to tighten everything up. And that's going to also help set the boat. Um, but let's talk about where in the boat maybe we're feeling this, this offset. So if it is um, up at the catch, say we're coming up and then we are feeling right at the catch, a drop to one side. If we're feeling that, then more than likely, um, what's happening is um, people are doing things with their body or their hands that are different right at the catch than everywhere else. We tend to come up to the catch and um, you're supposed to get your arms away, your body over, your body is set in a position and you hold that position all the way up to the catch and then you put your blade in and then you take your stroke. We're not perfect. So what a lot of rowers will do, they don't get their body all the way forward. So then they come up and they're right at the catch and they actually finish getting forward. And that sudden lunge is problematic. Um, another thing is going to be that when we're up there, um, a lot of times that lunge forward also turns into a lunge down into the boat, down. And we don't ever want anything going up or down. We don't want to be lowering our body into the into the boat um or our hands and um in that case it could be the body weight dropping right there that's going to change the set of the boat or 
And when you drop your shoulders and you drop your hands, when that goes down, what goes up? The blade. When the blade goes up, we affect the set of the boat. So right at that moment, you might see that maybe one person's blade suddenly is um, higher before they go in the water. So it's going to look like, let's see, I'm going to go like this. They might be pretty level and then right towards the catch, they raise their blade. It's called skying your blade and then it goes in the water and rather than, right? So versus skying is they come up and then down. We don't want to do that. Um, that's going to be probably because they dropped their hands or they dropped their shoulders, which also ends up dropping their hands before they go up. A lot of rowers will do this in anticipation of a fast catch because they equate speed with that, like further distance. They, they want a further distance to go so they can go from way down here to way up here. But really they only needed to be here and it's just fast that, that little two inches. So a lot of rowers will prepare by lunging and dipping so that they can go further. Um, so if you are feeling a drop to one side at the catch, more than likely someone in your boat is dropping their shoulders, dropping their outside shoulder, or dropping their hands. Um, and you can look for that with their blades and you can try to see if someone's blades are going up. We could also be offset at the finish. Um, at the finish, that's probably gonna be related to one of two things. Again, it's pretty much the bodies and the hand heights. So if you, uh, we don't want anything coming up or down, right? And that includes our bodies. So a lot of times at the layback, some people will lay back really far. And that extra, like, instead of leaning back to here, you lay back to here. This is, sorry, it's easier this way. Um, this keeps us, this is our head horizontal, right? And then when we lay back too far, we've now gone down and we've taken our body weight and set it down into the boat. And they are really low and that's going to push on the boat. And you're gonna feel that and it's gonna offset the boat. So it could be that somebody's leaning back too far, in which case you're gonna remind everybody to sit up, stay tall, not laying back too far. Um, or it could be tap down. And um, that's gonna be, everyone needs the same amount of tap down. Sometimes some people only do a little bit of a tap down, um, especially collegiate athletes. They were all, if they were recruits, they were taught different things in their high school program. Doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong. They're different styles. And so it's hard to unify all these different styles into a collegiate boat. Tap down is when you come in and then you bring your hands down to get the blade out of the water. Um, we need to do that, but how much are we doing it? Some people are gonna go just a little bit and then feather their blade just above the water. And some people are gonna bring it down all the way to their waist and, and then feather it so they have lots of room above the water. We don't need that much room more than likely unless your coach has instructed you to um, bring it all the way down. But we, we really shouldn't have that big of a tap down. Um, but a lot of times people try to have a fast tap down and get their blade out really fast, which is good. We want it out fast. But again, speed with distance gets mixed up and they think fast means far and aggressive and they slam their hands down into into the gunnel of the boat and into into their their waist. Um, one problem is the distance, that extra distance. What happens when their hands go down? Their ha handle, their blade goes up. And when their blade goes up, the whole set of the boat is going to try to level it out, right? So when their hands go down too far, their blade goes up. When their blade goes up, the whole set of the boat is going to try to go down on their side. Okay, so if you are feeling it dip down to that side, maybe somebody's got too big of a tap down. That uh, could also just be that aggressiveness. If people are slamming their hands into their thighs, that aggressiveness, that is also going to hurt, right? Hurt the rhythm of the boat. Um, it's not smooth, and we want to be super smooth. So we work on being a little bit smoother. You can still be fast without slamming things, and maybe you don't need to go down quite as far. Um, Lastly, this is the last one I can think of, um, is going to be 
offset in the middle of the stroke on the recovery or the drive. You can be offset in, in the drive. Um, if you're offset in either of those places, um, it's either going to be, again, hands, easy, um, or it could be how they're applying their pressure. So in the drive, maybe they're not applying even pressure through both legs or squeezing that core and that, that can affect it. Um, but I'm gonna say the easiest one is gonna be hand heights. A lot of times through the drive, what rowers might do is raise their hands really high and prepare for that tap down, right? So that's the thing is a lot of times rowers, they, they go really high and then they do this big arching thing to get a tap down and it ends up being way more movement than they need. So part of that problem is gonna be too big of a tap down, but also in the middle of that stroke, our hands are way up here, the blade's way deep in the water and it doesn't need to be that deep. So from the coxswain seat, you can look to see your blade is really deep. I can't even see the top of your blade. If you can't see the top of the blade, it's too far. You gotta be able to see it just under the surface of the water, if not at the surface of the water. So if it's really, really deep, their hands are too high. So we talk about level hands, tell them not to dig their blade, their, their blade's too deep under the water, we wanna keep it level. That's gonna be something you can try to communicate with the coach because their, their hands shouldn't be high. They need to be right level the whole time where, they, where they're gonna pull in needs to be level. So we talk about level hands. And uh, on the recovery level hands, sometimes rowers will um, dip their hands way too low. Um, you know, we talked already about dipping right at the catch, but sometimes rowers will just come down and swoop really low the whole time. If their hands are way too low, their blades way too high, what happens when it's high? It tries to, the boat tries to level out and it offsets the boat. Um, so what can you do? You're trying to look for these individual things. You can look at their blades. You can try to feel what's happening when it's happening in the boat. Um, you can also try to rotate pairs and see like when it's set and when it's not set and try to figure out who might be involved. If all of a sudden you add in three, four and the boat suddenly is doing that lunge down to port, it's probably one of them couple other things I forgot when I first made this live video. Um, one really, really, really big one is catch timing. So when somebody is catching before everybody else in the boat, it's going to grab onto that water and actually pull down to that side. So one thing that you can kind of easily see is look at the blades to see if someone is catching early. You can also feel it because it's grabbing down to that side and if you, even if you don't look and see what's happening, you know it's one of two things right there at the catch. Um, either someone's catching early or someone is lunging and dropping their hands. If you're in a four and you can't see, you can relay that information um, to them and you can talk to your coach because your coach can see what's happening you know, you take your best guess and you try to do process of elimination to figure out what's happening in the boat. Um, but catch timing in an eight, you can look and see. In a four, you can see most everybody because you can see uh, bow seat, you can see three seat if you look, especially in practice, you can look over. Um, and then that's, that's half of the boat. And if it's not them, then it's stern pair. Or you can kind of see when they're catching in comparison to the surge, I've talked about this in other videos. Um, so that that surge of the of the rest of the boat, you can compare to three uh, bow bow pair. Um, and then uh, the other thing that it could be is is we talked about our bodies, um, but I didn't talk about leaning to the side. A lot of people will try to set the boat by leaning away. So if it's down on one side, they try to lean away so that way it comes back up. And that's not a great way to set the boat. Um, it actually is uh, counterproductive. So um, if you're in an eight, you can look down the boat. If you always see one person's head just sitting on the outside of everybody else's, like way more, they're leaning a lot, right? Um, so uh, you can you can look for that. Otherwise, maybe that's something that um, your coach might be able to see that you can't see. But um, 
sometimes people try to lean away. So we talk about centering the bodies and really centering the body, squeezing the core, staying, staying centered, right? Not leaning to one side or the other. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Um, remember that when you're diagnosing these problems, you're just doing your best. Um, if you cannot see it, you, you can guess, you can give information, you can do process of elimination, and you can bring that information to the coach. If you come to your coach and you say, hey, this is what I'm noticing, um, always at the catch, we're doing this, or always at the finish, it's dropping, or it's wobbling back and forth the whole time and we're never set, what's going on? And bringing that information to your coach is going to be um, really great because you can have that dialogue and it's going to make you look really aware and um, proactive to your coach. So even if you don't know what the problem is, you can still really, really help your boat just by getting as much information as you can. Notice where, um, where in the stroke it's happening, when it's happening. Try to narrow it down as much as you can. And I already realized I forgot another one. I talked about um, I talked about the finish. You know, getting your blade out all the way before you feather is also going to be important. If you're feathering under the water um, and throwing water, that could also uh, affect the set at the finish. There's so many things, guys. There are so many things that affect the set. It's rarely, rarely going to be one person doing something simple. That might have the biggest impact is when one person's doing something really crazy, but more more than likely you've got like four or eight people doing a bunch of weird things and you're just trying to get them to match up the best. So communicate what information you have, guess a little bit, adjust, um, make general calls like keeping the head forward, right? That's another thing that also affects the set of the boat. When people are looking all over the place, your head's like eight pounds. Look forward, okay? Keep your chin up. Don't look down. Um, so you can say ice forward. You can say level hands, you know, tabletop hands, really trying to get them to focus on not doing this or this or lunging. You know, keep the bodies up, right? Keep the bodies up. Keep the body centered. Squeeze the core. These are things that you can do and you can try to say, even if you don't know exactly what it is or who it is, you can do your best to relay this information. Make those those big calls about handle heights just to try to get it knocked out as much as possible. And then talk to your coach when you are on land. And talk to your stroke seat and just see what's going on. Try your best. Um, all right. Now, thank you so much for watching. Um, leave your comments, questions below, and I will try to get to them in another video. Thank you again so much. Appreciate it.